Merry Christmas to all my viewers. Christmas postbag time. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a very selfish episode around sensors and IoT. The first one is a unusual package. It comes from Norway and it has electronic prototypes and it is from Emil, one of my viewers. So let's open it. There is a letter here and it is open source hardware and it is a UART adapter. Zeptobit isolated USB UART adapter. So we will have a look what it is. Two different boards. One is a isolated USB to UART adapter with a large USB plug and the other one seems to be the same but with a mini USB plug. What is the purpose of these boards? You can imagine if you look at the board design we have here two slots milled slots. This is the reason for this USB adapter. Here we have optocouplers and this side and this side is completely isolated. Usually you can have about 2000 volt between this side and your USB. And this is particularly important for example if you have a load like that and you want to connect this load to your computer. Here we have the computer, here we have the electronic load and here we have the device under test. If we connect now the computer with our load, for example with RX and TX, then we automatically have also to connect our ground from the computer to the load. Now the load is also connected with ground and with plus or VCC to the device under test. If this device under test for example does not have a ground reference but is probably on 10 volts if you want to do some measurements on the high side of your of your device then you have a problem because here you have 10 volt and here you have 0 volt. And this is then why we have a current which flows through this ground in this direction. This is not what we want and this is why we have to cut the wires here. The load itself has no reference here. This setup works without any problems but this here is the problem. And with this adapter we can cut this wire we isolate here but the signals still come through in both directions. This is why we need such a adapter between the load and the computer. If you have no isolation this can at least give you completely wrong results and in the worst case it can blow up probably your computer or this load. And if I have a look here I had to build something like that with a USB on this side and a USB on that side to isolate the whole thing. Now this one is much bigger but inside we also have a device like that. So this is a Kickstarter. I will leave a link and it ends on uh, January 1st. Um, I think the, one of these in, in your lab is always good if you work with USB on your bench then it's much more safe to use one of these to not blow up your computer unattended. And here nothing. 
no connection between here and here. So, good thing. The next one is a huge one and I had to open it already and it has to do with our major project here. I have a chance to do a IOT workshop with about 60 people in Zurich next month and I needed lots of stuff. And here we have nice material. Let's take the yellow one because this is very unusual. These are just ordinary USB to mini USB cables. Nicely packaged in all different colors and they go with all these shields here. These are Wemos shields in preparation and this is already finished. So this is what uh, each um, participant gets. It's a Wemos board with a temperature and um, humidity sensor with an OLED with a Wemos and uh, with a connection with a connection board. And of course, I nearly forgot these because uh, they also are necessary to program the whole thing. So, will be nice packages. 30 pieces when we are finished. I will prepare a whole story for these small boards with some examples and some of the, my viewers asked whether uh, this uh, course will be available online. I do not think whether somebody will film, but for sure I will place the instructions on my homepage. You find the link in the description. Next one. These are temperature sensors for what we saw before. Additional ones and um, we have to solder all these together to and test them. So a lot to do. The next one is only a small one, very thin one with uh, quite a big chip and uh, a resonator or a quartz and it has V in and I in. Interesting. Let's have a look what it is. ZJMCU5460 this contains a single phase bi-directional power energy measuring I integrated circuit and you see here it has input for current and input for voltage and quite an elaborated internal circuitry which calculates at the end a power. I was asked a few times already how to measure uh, real power in energy systems and maybe I can do something with uh, this chip here. We'll see if it works also on uh, 220 volt. I'm not sure. Now I have one which does not need a knife because it's already unpackaged. Now if you look at it, it looks like a normal ESP32 development board with this uh, very special 3D antenna here with the ESP32 but it has something here and if we look at it it is a short antenna and this short antenna is for 868 megahertz or at least it should be I didn't test it and this is a LoRa ESP32 board we see now many of these uh, appearing on the market and uh, I was asked also by viewers whether I can test one of these. I have this one and the second one a Heltec. This one is a TTGO and the second one a Heltec will come also and I plan to compare this board with a Heltec board and with a normal Hope RFM 95 based board to see how they work. I am not sure if they are really 868 megahertz because earlier on they only sold it for 433 megahertz and I want to check it with my spectrum analyzer whether they really perform well and how they compare to each other on 868. Of course I will also test the antenna 
whether it is for 868 because frequent viewers know that I got antennas like that looking like these antennas but they were not at all made for 868 megahertz they were if I remember right normal Wi-Fi antennas I really want to know if this is a good system so stay tuned this one also does not need a knife because it's also unpackaged it is a simple thing it is a microphone an operational amplifier a trim pot and some pins here I have a second one which is very similar it has a bigger mic but has also the same op, op amp and a potentiometer and if we look at what it does we have the microphone here because this is a condenser microphone we need a VCC connection and then we have the first amplifier and the output of this first amplifier goes to the analog output and then we have a second the second op amp and this is a, a comparator and the comparator basically compares the voltage which comes from the analog with a voltage which can be influenced by this trim pot and the output here is at the digital output and what this is is uh, we can create a analog or a digital output from a microphone the amplifying factor is about 300 here we can connect a Arduino or an ESP8266 but I will show you it has some disadvantages here we have now here the analog output and the digital output and if I if I whistle you see here you see here the analog output and here it's always one and it goes to zero when the one two three when the level is a little bit higher but one problem is it goes up and down very fast and you do not get a distinct signal which is on if there is a, a voice or if it's noise and with, which is off when it's no noise it is more or less the same with this device here the only difference is here we have a zero when it's no noise and the one when it's noise and if we do a single shot we see here that we get very short 100 microsecond impulses which are very hard to detect for an Arduino if you do something else this is not useful like that uh, to steer an Arduino or not easy to steer an Arduino you have to add here maybe a diode and an RC now this one also does not need a knife because it's also already unpackaged and I also got this one from a viewer and if we have a look here it is something with RF because these are antennas here and here it's something like an analog circuitry with a potentiometer and if we have a look at it it is a simplytronic expand motion detector so this is a radar sensor but it is different than the, the radar sensors I so far used it does not have only on and off I hope at least it should have also a velocity detection possibility this one is pretty much the same you see here the setup is very very simple uh, very very similar but this one has no analog circuitry we have to build this circuitry ourselves and here it's already done we have a, a project in mind where we want to use these detectors to detect moving targets and we also want not only to detect that whether they are there but we want also to detect in which direction they move if they move towards or 
from this sensor. We will see uh, whether we will be able to, um, to detect that. By the way, these are very cheap sensors because they are used in automatic doors, so they can produce them in thousands and thousands. The next one definitely needs a knife and even less close-up. I'm pretty sure it's from Banggood because of the way they package their things. What the hell is this? The packaging is not really good because it is slightly damaged here. But anyway, it's not very nice looking. And on this side it's covered. It should be a ESD mat like this one here. But a little bit fresher for the second working place in this lab. But I do not think this is really something very useful. For example, good ESD mats have also this kind of device here, where we can connect our body like that. And now it's somehow grounded, because also the whole mat is connected to ground. And this should protect our devices from ESD over voltage. I'm not sure if I will use this. Probably we, f we will find a way to connect one of these here. And then uh, it should be okay to be, to be used. So this is the rest of the package. Let's see if we find something more interesting here. Now this seems to be interesting, catches my attention. Now this is probably for the child in the elder man. It's a motor, it's a gear, geared motor. Now I understood. Here we have the screws, we screw it here and we connect it to this shaft here and the shaft has also a flat side so it will not turn around and here it should have a sensor for the speed for the speed what do i want to do with one wheel this is why I have a second one here, which is the same. So I have two. Because a balancing robot only needs two wheels. And this balancing robot has um, NEMA stepper motors. And I wanted to try once another principle with geared motors. And we will have a look. This has 320 RPM here. And... Uh, Maybe they are a little bit stronger than these stepper motors and for sure I will learn how to use normal gear motors instead of these stepper motors. So maybe you will see once a self-balancing robot but with different motors. Now I connected the 12 volt, mounted the wheel and let's connect the 12 volt. It's quite fast. And if we want to stop it, it draws more than an ampere. I assume that these wires are not too thick for this ampere. Whoa! <laughs> Dangerous thing. I think that it is stronger than the NEMA motors. If I change the polarity, it turns into the other direction and this is very important for a self-balancing robot because we have to move forth and back. And the other wires, they have an encoder connected where we can detect in which direction and which speed this wheel turns. 
and because I do not know exactly how fast this, um, this robot has to go, I ordered a second one, similar set, slightly smaller, um, also with an encoder, and this one has 210 RPM, and it is a 6 volt. So this one is 12 volt, and this is 6 volt, and the wheel is also smaller. So this would be then for a smaller robot. We will see which one fits better. And of course here, I also have a second one. And this is the last motor I ordered. This is without a wheel and without an encoder. It is 12 volt and 730 RPM. So, and here I have also two of them. Now I am equipped with different motors. I did not have any motors in my lab so far. So I'm equipped now with a slow moving, a medium moving and a faster moving geared motor. This has a ratio 1 to 10. So I assume that this is a, will be a quite a strong motor. But I have to tell you something happened. Actually, I wanted this tool as my Christmas gift and the package disappeared. I ordered it already in October and it disappeared. I had to contact Banggood and they did some investigations and find also that their package was is missed somewhere in the Netherlands, I think, so they sent me another one, but f this is not for this Christmas, maybe for next Christmas or anyway in between. The next one is also on viewers request, because viewers asked me about these Wi-Fi controlled LED, LED controllers for RGB LEDs. Now this is a very small one where you put in, I assume, 12 volt here. Maybe it's a ESP8266. Yeah, here you can, you have 5 volts to 28 volt. So I'm interested how this works and here is a description in English. Oh. Quite an elaborated description with lots of pictures. Looks quite nice. It has a mobile phone application here. So it's maybe cloud-based as usual. It obviously should also work with Alexa. We will see. And this one seems at least to be similar. It has one difference. We will later see a similar thing. This is an IR diode. These are the same. They look the same. They just have an IR receiver. And here we have a IR controller. Just a normal IR controller to control the whole thing. Now, for the moment, I cannot show you how this work works because I did not get so far the LEDs for that. This was a package in a different package and this is still on the way. But I'm sure uh, the winter is long enough to play around with LEDs. And this is the last one from Banggood. It is a ESP32 plain vanilla chip. I ordered three of them because I want to do also some uh, deep sleep stuff in the future and there I want to have some bare bone chips. They are, they are dirt cheap and uh, so I just have a few laying around. Here we have another packet which is definitely not from China. Looks completely different. This one is from Google. And it's a voice kit. Still paper. It's interesting. I thought we are in the internet age, but it's a very nice, actually, a very nice um, 
manual and it's probably really English and not Chinglish. Uh -huh. A loudspeaker. A huge button. Cardboard. Cardboard and cables. Ah, this is the microphone with a tiny microphone here and here. Two microphones, I think. So that's the voice hat and this goes to a Raspberry Pi and at the end it should be something like Google Home. That's what I expect, but maybe we can learn a little bit how this whole thing works with voice recognition and so on. So I'm pretty sure you will see once a video when I assemble this. And the last one for today, this is TSOP4438. These are the, I think, most modern IR receivers. They are not as dirt cheap as the normal ones, but they should be a little bit better in performance. So I thought for this uh, few cents more, I buy the better ones. These are the TSOP4438 and these are the TSOP4838. These are legacy, so you should not use it anymore. And these are the actual ones, the 4.4s are the actual ones and 4.4.3.8 or 4.8.3.8 means they are optimized for 38 kilohertz, which is the frequency most of the remote controls use. I hope you found some interesting stuff in this long video and for all with public holidays ahead, enjoy. And for the rest of you, just enjoy the coming week. Bye.